Welcome back to Continental Club, where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. Doogie is away skiing this week on the continent, so he's classic not here. Doogie. Yeah, it's classic Doogie, isn't it? Loves it. Uh, so I'm in the hot seat this week, taking control of things. Hamill's also away. He's going to South Africa, so you know, if, if you're there, go and, go and say hi to him. Um, before we start, big announcement to make. The Football Blogging Awards nominations have been announced. And amazingly, we've been nominated for four awards, haven't we? Hey. Which is um, pretty great. Best overall content creator, Football Daily. Best international content creator for Euro Football Daily. Uh, best podcast for Sunday Vibes Extra Time. And most importantly, best influencer. Joe wow, Tomlinson. I'm influencing souls. I'm influ yeah. influencing human behaviour out right. here. You certainly Be have influenced mine. Stupid. There you go. Great advice. So obviously, <laughs> link in the description below and on screen right now. Go and vote in those categories. I think the voting ends sometime next week, maybe on the 12th, around the time that Britain is due to leave the EU. Um, so yeah, go and do that. Um, uh, but yeah. What a day. What a day that could be. <laughs> well, we start with quite a serious subject. You guys have been getting at us on Twitter about it. Obviously, it's been the kind of overriding story of the week the abuse received by Moyes Keane at the uh, Cagliari-Juventus game and the comments made by Benucci in particular after it. Um, Ethan Williams has asked, are Benucci and Allegri in the wrong for criticising Moyes Keane celebrating? And Ahmed Elnuri 6 has asked, what do you think of Benucci's comments and what should be done to help stop the racial abuse players receive? To give you a bit of background about the situation, Moyes Keane was racially abused by Cagliari fans during the Cagliari-Juventus game midweek. Um, and then celebrated in front of them after scoring. Benucci, after the game, um, came out and made some very controversial comments, um, in particular saying, I think the blame is 50-50 because Moyes shouldn't have done that, celebrate, and the fans should not have reacted that way. Um, and these thoughts were kind of echoed, actually, by Max Allegri. Both yeah. have come in for huge criticism, um, quite rightly, and in particular Benucci. Um, who I think did actually kind of retract his comments a little bit afterwards and said that it was kind of in the heat of the moment. But even to have reacted initially that way um, is quite concerning, um, uh, considering his kind of seniority at the club. Um, what do you guys make of the situation? Um, I think that it's embarrassing. I think it's yeah. embarrassing for Juventus and for Italian football and for football generally. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that Bonucci said that. I, it, there are certain... There are certain crimes essentially that mm. someone can commit which absolutely nothing can justify and this is one of those situations like even if there'd been no racist abuse before he scored mm. then Keane had gone and had celebrated in front of the fans and then they'd started the racist yeah. abuse that would in no way justify the racist abuse mm. there is nothing that can justify it and Bonucci reacting that way is absolutely ridiculous to me and Allegri doing it afterwards because this to me is the broader point. Danny Rose uh, said, it basically came out last night, Danny Rose saying, I can't wait to stop playing football um, because this stuff is persistent and never gets tackled properly by yeah. the powers that be. And I think that weirdly, what, what Bonucci and Allegri said is actually a bigger issue than the Cagliari fans themselves. Mm. Like, there are always going to be racists in society. There are always going to be racists at football matches. But the problem is that there are people in power who refuse to address these issues, who are so complacent about it and treat it as if it's not their problem to be solved. And now, as a result, people like Danny Rose and Raheem Sterling are having to be the, the authorities on this. They're the ones having to try and solve this issue. It's absolutely ridiculous that the victims of a crime are having to go and confront the, the perpetrators of that crime themselves because they know that the people in power won't do anything about it. It's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that Bonucci came out and said this. And I really like, actually, that other players are calling him out by name mm -hmm. online and saying, Leo, Leo Bonucci, this is disgraceful, and Allegri, this is disgraceful, because it's just, it's embarrassing. And there's nothing's ever going to change as long as people like that essentially defend racists. That's what's going on. And Juve this year have basically put themselves on the wrong side of every moral issue that has come their way. So I, I, I'm not even surprised anymore. But um, this is a persistent problem in football <coughs> generally and people need to do something about it. And when I say people, I don't mean players. I mean 
administrators, I mean managers. Allegri should have taken his players off the pitch as soon as Matuidi told him what was going on. The referee should have stopped the game as soon as he heard the racist abuse. They have been specifically told to do that by the authorities, so I do not understand why this game was allowed to continue. Yeah, as an, I think I completely agree with Pato. Echo the statements 100%. It's an absolute disgrace. Benucci has completely f***ed it. What an absolute clown he's turned out to be over the past <laughs> week. Um, but... You talked about Raheem Sterling and Danny Rose having to fight racism. How about the authorities and the federations and the leagues stand up and do some serious damage to both mm. the clubs that are doing that have fans involved in it, i.e. Cagliari, who should be deducted points, they should have stadium closures, they yes. should have absolutely monstrous fines. Yeah. Not the pittance, 10,000 to 20,000 euro fines we've seen in the past. I'm talking like maybe even transfer ban levels of fines. That's what we should be seeing because then fans, they won't want to harm their own club by risking it. You know, if Cagliari got a 10 point deduction now and a five game stadium closure, the fans that came in at game six, the first sign of racism, they'd be telling their peers, what are you doing? Stop it, you're embarrassing yourself. That, that should put an end to it in the immediate. In the long term, authorities need to be doing way more to support campaigns like Kick It Out, uh, you know, who are struggling with funding as it is. I think they need something like a quarter of a million pounds a season to survive, and they're not really getting that. I also think that they need to support the players more you know for Raheem Sterling to have to lead the charge for racism in 2019 is a poor indictment of where FIFA and UEFA currently are in yeah. their stand against racism and you know I don't I don't really think Cagliari fans deserve the airtime to be totally honest about this I think they should be deducted points I think they should have stadium bans and I think the fine should be so monstrous that you would, nip, you would nip it in the bud early doors because it can't keep happening and it does keep happening. And it's in the same leagues involving the same teams or the same national teams repeatedly. Yeah. And it can't happen anymore. It's 2019, mm -hmm. put a stop to it. But Viva Raheem Sterling is what I'm saying. This should go for him in his Player of the Year nomination. Yeah, I completely echo those sentiments as well. Points deductions and stadium bans are really the least that should be done. Um, at this stage. It's amazing that they haven't been um, dished out in the past. I think we see it, saw it with CSK Moscow who were able to um, kind of bend the rules a bit in the Champions League when they played Man City a couple of years back. Um, and yeah, the, the, these problems kind of have just been left to fester. Um, but probably just the first step in quite a long battle um, to actually kick racism out of the sport. But what do you guys reckon? Let us know in the comments below. We move on to our big match preview, but before we do that, please make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to Euro Football Daily for more of this greatness that you're seeing in front of you and more. Sat Wars the League, Scout Report, all the rest. Uh, our big match preview this week is Bayern Munich versus Borussia Dortmund, kicking off tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. English time. I think 6.30 p.m. European time. <laughs> Uh, German time at least. But anyway, obviously... Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, just, you know, for all our European fans. But um, Bundesliga title race on a knife edge with seven mm. games to go. Obviously, this is a big one. Lucien Favre has said it won't decide the title. I beg to differ. Um, Dortmund currently top on 63 points, two ahead of Bayern, but with a goal, def uh, goal difference deficit of five compared with their Bavarian rivals. Um, so, Dortmund can move five points clear with a win. If Bayern win, it is at the Allianz as well. Um, they can claw back initiative in the title race. Um, obviously, they uh, drew one all with Freiburg last weekend. That put an end to a six-game winning run. Um, so, they've lost a bit of momentum. Um, Dortmund, on the other hand, won their last three games. Um, and two of those, I think, included last-minute winners or needed last-minute winners um, in order to secure the three points. So, they're running hot at the moment. Um, and in terms of their record at the Allianz, I think they've won five of 14 games since 2011, uh, most recently in the 2017 oh, Pokal semi-final. So yeah, not bad at all, but I, I think that was kind of mainly in the Klopp era because they haven't won away in a league meeting since 2014. So that's a good Jeez. what, five years. And obviously last season, uh, this fixture ended 6-0 to Bayern. So recent kind of history suggests that this could be Bayern's victory. Having said that, Dortmund obviously look a lot better this season. It's a new look side. Uh, in that 6-0 loss, 
Uh, their team included Batshuayi, Castro, Socrates, Dahoud and Scherler. Obviously four of those have left um, and Dahoud's only started one game since October, I believe. Um, so yeah, an interesting tie. Uh, Joe, how do you see Bayern going into this game? Well, they're without Manuel Neuer between the sticks. Obviously, he spent the last couple of weeks out with a calf injury, which might end up being a positive, to be totally honest, coming into this one. He's had a horrible season yet again, so I don't think it'll be too much of a hammer blow. Certainly not the hammer blow that was a few seasons ago. Whether or not they were without Nicolas Suda as well, I'm not too sure. He was obviously sent off midweek against Heidenheim in the 13th minute, but I don't personally know whether Pokal sending off continue into the league in the same way FA Cup sendings no, off not sure. continue into the Premier League. If you know, and you know more about the Bundesliga than me, let me know in the comments below. But that midweek result against Heidenheim, was not great. 5-4 winners, obviously, but mm. shipping four to a second division side. I think if they'd lost that one, it would have been the first time they've lost to a team in a lower league for 15 wow. years. They shipped seven shots on target. I'm pretty sure they would have been fuming about that one coming into it. Jerome Boateng's also taken a lot of shit in the press coming into this one. He's arranged a sort of exclusive winners party in an exclusive nightclub in Munich. If they do beat... Borussia Dortmund, then it it seems okay. If they lose, then he really is going to take some shit from the hierarchy at Munich because that's not how they like to do business whatsoever, is it? Uh, Robert Lewandowski as well. He can, I think, reach 200 Bundesliga goals in this game, which would be a nice little milestone for him. I personally think Bayern are going to get the job done here. I, I've just got a gut feeling that they're going to shit house a 1-0 and then that'll be it for the season. I agree with you. I think Favre is chatting shit when he says this game isn't going to be the, the defining factor in the Bundesliga title race, because I think it absolutely is. If they win this and go five points clear, I think they're going to win the Bundesliga. But if yeah. they lose this, that's just going to be a shit house 1-0. Lucky goal from Bayern Munich, guaranteed. Yeah, what do you reckon about Borussia, Pat? Um, they've got some issues coming into this game. Hakimi's out for the rest of the season. He's got a metatarsal injury. So they're probably going to have to shift Guerrero to left back, which is obviously not the biggest problem in the world. Or I suppose they could play Schmelzer there, but he hasn't really played much this season. Um, they're kind of a bit makeshift at right back as well. I think Piszczek's out, so they might play Marius Wolf there, but he's been there the last few weeks and they've been fine. Piszczek's been fantastic this season. Though. Yeah, Piszczek has been great, but I mean, I still think that they've they've got enough to compete in this game. Uh, their, their forward line is so dangerous. This is pretty much a story of an amazing attack versus an amazing defence. Um, but the attack is Dortmund's and the defence is Bayern's. Mm. Bayern's attack has not been great this season. It really hasn't. With the sole exception of Lewandowski, the rest of it's been dreadful. Um, so, I don't know. I, I find it a, a really difficult one to predict. I mean, Paco Alcácer is obviously still having a sensational season. He's like three goals behind Lewandowski in the league, yeah. having played 1,400 minutes fewer. Yeah. Uh, he, has, he still hasn't got 1,000 minutes in the league. He's got 16 goals which is pretty crazy. insane. That Sancho's been involved in 20 goals now in the league. But I don't know. I mean, the thing is, it could decide the title if Bayern lose it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they, they can lose the title with this game. If they draw or if they lose, then they will not win the league, I think, because Dortmund's schedule after this is so much easier. Dortmund after this have teams like Mainz. Their hardest game is Gladbach, I think, on the last day of the season. Bayern after this have Leipzig and I think they might have Hoffenheim as well. They've definitely got another kind of, or, or no, Eintracht Frankfurt, I think they've okay. still got. Very so they've still got two very tough teams. So they need to win this pretty much. Otherwise, they're likely to probably lose another one of those games mm. or draw one and slip further behind. It's possible that Dortmund lose this and still go on to win the title. I don't think it's possible that Bayern don't win this and go on to win the title. Yeah, Bayern have to win this game. Yeah. So very quickly, score predictions from you boys. I'm going to stick with my gut. I'm going to go 1-0 Bayern. Yeah, I think I might go 2-0 Bayern. I do, I do think Bayern will get it done at home, but I don't think that means they'll win the league. Oh, interesting. I was going to go with a Bayern win, but just to be different, I'm going to say... Very entertaining two-all draw. Oh, yeah. that'd be great. It's, yeah, it's difficult to see Dortmund winning at the Alliance, isn't it? Just from, from kind of recent form. But uh, what do you guys reckon? Let us know in the comments. Finishing up with quick fire questions. At Marvin Smolders has asked on Twitter, will Pochettino leave Tottenham if they aren't in the top four this year? And if so, where will he go? What do you reckon? Do you want to take it, Pat? Mm, uh, 
If he does go, it will be to Bayern. They're pretty much the only big club who could have a vacancy this summer. But I think he probably will stick around. Like He's always talked about how committed he is to the project. And I just find it hard to think of a vacancy that will be as appealing. Real Madrid are obviously uh, committing to Zidane. PSG have got Tuchel, who will get at least another season. Unless Allegri leaves Juventus, which I think is relatively unlikely, then I think the obvious one is Bayern. And actually, I think Pochettino would fit really well in the Bundesliga. I think he'd um, he'd actually push them forward a little bit from the days of just, from all these clubs that tried to emulate Klopp's high mm. pressing system. I think Pochettino is a little bit more tactically savvy than most managers in that league at the moment. And I think they'd walk the division and they'd have a much, much better shot in the Champions League. Plus, you know, they're rebuilding with a lot of youth. I would love to see Pochettino given the reins of a genuine super club. He'd finally get some trophies so people could stop talking about that. And I really think that, you know, with guys like Luca Hernandez, with Pavar, uh, with potentially Werner, with Nicola Pepe coming in, um, if all those guys come in, then I think that you could have a really exciting next five or ten years if you got Pochettino. Yeah, I agree, actually. It's a very exciting project, isn't it? Joe, what do you reckon? Will he actually go in the summer? Uh, I think he's going to stay at Tottenham now. I yeah, think yeah. he was very close to leaving, I'd imagine, when they spent zero pounds again in January. Although they have, obviously, this week turned a world record profit. That means very little to Pochettino if he's got zero to spend yet again this coming summer, obviously having spent a billion pounds on a stadium. Uh, we kind of talked in more detail about Pochettino to Bayern Munich in a recent podcast. We'll put that in the link in the description below entitled The Managerial Merry-Go-Round. Where will they go this summer? Either way, I think this time Pochettino is going to have to stay at Tottenham. He has no other option. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, on to our next one and our final one, I think, uh, at Jabroni Brett. Um, where do you see, or who do you see, as Gareth Bale's most fitting suitors at the end of the season? Jesus I Christ. I think he's, uh, he's going to stay at Real Madrid. I'd be very, yeah. very surprised if Gareth Bale left Real Madrid this summer, purely because nobody's going to sign him. Um, yeah. Manchester United perfectly stocked with forward players. They're obviously the team that's perennially linked. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur. I don't see them identifying Gareth Bale as a likely candidate as a forward. He's going to want too much in terms of wages and probably still cost you 40, 50 million euros, potentially at a minimum, uh, if Real Madrid want to shift him on. The only other option for Gareth is a club like Inter Milan, potentially, mm -hmm. who, if they sold Mauro Icardi, they think, oh, maybe we, we try and get a superstar forward through the door. Do they do it? I mean, it wouldn't shock me, to be horribly honest. It wouldn't shock me, but I just think he's going to stay at Real Madrid. His wages are just too, too chunky there. Yeah. Yeah, do you agree, Pat? It's hard to disagree with that. I think there are tons yeah. of right-wingers around at the moment. Mm. I mean, like, and, and the older ones like Douglas Costa and Gareth Bale are going to be tough to shift because they're on big wages. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard to imagine in there next season, but I genuinely can't see who's going to pay the money. Yeah, I think I'm inclined to agree. So there you have it, Pochettino and Bale aren't going anywhere this summer. Sorry to be boring. Uh, we'll move into the M board. Um, thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Joe, where should they go next? Uh, why not head over to Football Daily, check out We Need To Talk. That's just gone live now. You can also check out Stat Wars this coming weekend. And we have the Football Social on Sunday, yes. I believe. So make sure you tune in for that one. Nice one. Thanks for watching and see you later.